So I just recently passed 500 days in my Minecraft 1.19 survival world, and here are those 500 days from episode 1 to episode 12, all in a single Minecraft movie. Hello everyone, I'm Night Cirque and welcome to episode 1 of my Minecraft Survival Let's Play series. I'm super excited to get this series going and I really hope you are too. This series is going to be fast paced as in editing and progression, at least for me. I won't be making as much progression in these massive builds as some of these bigger YouTubers do, but I will be trying to go fast paced compared to what I usually do. We did spawn in a snow biome, but I definitely do not want to live in a snow biome. I do like spawning here though, because we can get some spruce wood and spruce wood is one of my favorite types of wood in Minecraft. Oak is a classic. I think birch is really good for flooring. And if you strip the birch logs, birch is also really nice. Dark oak is another one of my favorites. There's just so much to love about Minecraft. Looks like we got an igloo down here. We can go ahead and check that out. Another thing, I want this series to be a very interactive series. So if you have any suggestions on buildings that I should do, or just anything that I should do in an episode in general, please be sure to let me know down in the comments. There is some coal right here on the surface which is very nice to find. I'm just gonna make myself a wooden pickaxe. I'm not gonna worry about making myself any wooden tools besides the wooden pick. We'll go ahead and get coal from here and get some stone for some stone tools. And there we go. We now have full stone tools. Plus we got some torches. Now let's go check out that igloo we saw. All right, we have a bed, which is perfect. And we have some carpet. Looks like this igloo does have one of the- oh gosh. Okay, it's covered in water, but this is perfect. Here we go. Oh, this is perfect. We are given a golden apple and a splash potion of weakness, but we're not going to do anything with that just yet. We'll eventually come back and, you know, fix up that zombie villager, but for now, we're just going to leave them how they are. And we also got a cactus, which is very nice because if we can't find a desert, this will be perfect for us. I think I'm going to chop down a spruce tree, collect some spruce saplings, and then get in a boat and get off the snow. Pumpkins. There we go. Got our first two saplings. And two saplings should definitely be enough for us to plant some trees down wherever we decide our base will be. I don't have a biome I specifically want to live in, but I do know I don't want to live in the snow. It's getting to be night already. We'll go ahead and sleep here in a second. And that is it for our first night. Before we leave this area, there is a little cave down here. And I'm going to try and see if we can get some iron. And it's a dead end. Okay. Hello, brother. And this is one of the reasons why I do not want to live in the snow. There just aren't animals that really live out here. And I'm really low on food. And it's a, it's a bit of a struggle early on. Also, trying to grow crops in the snow also can be very difficult. So we're going to get on a boat and get on out of here. But first, let's get some fish. Oh, we got a ruined nether portal. This is a very nice find. Hopefully, we can get some good loot. And it's all right. A nice chest plate. Gold is always nice to get. And we're just going to leave the golden sword because it is not going to last very long. Not the greatest ruined nether portal, but at least we look in stylish. And looks like we have our very first iron of the series and it's just one piece. Okay. Oh no. This, this could be very bad. I hear lava and we're like trapped in the snow. Oh my gosh. Okay. We're just going to go around that. That could have been very bad. And that's another reason why it's not too good to live in the snow. I'm going to have to cook up my fish right here because we are just completely out of hunger. There is more fish down here. So we're going to get them and then head on out. Spawning in the snow is pretty rough. Now that our fish is done, let's go ahead and get out of here. Or at least try to get out of here. Okay, there is a pillager outpost down there. That's cool to find, but we're not going to do anything with it right now. Eventually, we will come back and check it out, but definitely not on episode one with no armor. And I finally see land that is not covered in snow. It's a very nice sight to see. And in real life, I love the snow more than any other type of weather. But in Minecraft, it's less than ideal to survive in. I'm sorry, cow, but you have food and leather that I need. Listen, I don't really need your wool because I got a bed and carpet already, but you have mutton. So, hey, thank you. I can't even pick it up. What a nice area we got right here. It's a very open valley. We got flowers. We got plenty of animals and a massive mountain. And we got a swamp down in that direction. Ooh, this is very good. We're going to go check out this boat. Hopefully there's a buried treasure map. We can get the buried treasure and then decide where we're going to make our base. Okay, four pieces of iron, four emeralds, three gold. I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a chest in this room. I don't know, we may have just gotten unlucky. Oh, there it is, okay. And, okay, they're not the best, but it's definitely an improvement. No buried treasure map, though. Now, I think only two chests do spawn in these. Oh, no, a third one. Oh, I'm glad I kept looking. 
All right, here is the buried treasure. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, we got lucky there. I really thought we were unlucky, but this is perfect. And we're close. It is back in the snow, and it's somewhere around here. Oh, there it is. Okay. And, oh my gosh. Okay, it is just one diamond, but that's like super cool to get a diamond on your first episode. Got so many emeralds. We got the diamond, plenty of iron, the heart of the sea. Okay, very, very successful. We are off to an amazing start. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Another creeper. Oh gosh. Ow. Okay, that's pretty cool. It looks like we found... I don't even know what to call this, but there's a chest. Oh gosh, I hear it drowned. Okay, he can't hit me. And it's just coal. Ooh, but a buried treasure. Okay, there's a guardian temple, which can be very good for the future, but it's not that good right now. We can come back another episode and conquer that. Okay, and it looks like our buried treasure is right around here. Okay, there it is. Perfect, perfect. Okay, we'll, we'll look what's in it in a second. Okay, we got more iron. Beautiful, more gold, more emeralds. Ooh, a dark oak forest. Whoa. What a cool area we have right here. I'm sorry, zombie. This is a really weird area because the dark oak forest gets cut off by the swamp and then it just continues like down there. Okay, this is super cool. I think this is where we are going to build our base. It may seem a little weird because it's like in a cave and right out of mine shaft, but I like it. We are going to set up a little camp right outside. We're going to empty our whole inventory into this chest and then take out what we need right now. I'm going to go ahead and get some food smelting. We got plenty of steak. And with this 27 iron, I'm just going to make myself a full set of iron armor. There we go. Looking good. There's a lot I want to do with this area. But the first thing I want to do is clear out all of this. Just so we have space up top to grow some more trees like spruce. And we're also going to go back in that direction and get some dark oak. I'm on my way right now to go and collect some dark oak. Because we're near it, but we're not like right next to it. The dark oak is just past that area right there. And I'm glad I created this iron pick. And let's see what we got in the chest. Curse of Vanishing. Curse of Vanishing. Fortune 3. Oh, yeah, we're definitely taking that. We've made it back to the Dark Oak. I'm going to collect enough, maybe just so I can get around 8 saplings. There we go. We have our eight saplings and our wood. Let's make our way back to base.
For about the last hour, I've been gathering resources for our build. I've been planting and chopping down dark oak trees, planting and chopping down spruce trees. And I even collected cobblestone that I smelted into regular stone that I then crafted into stone bricks. And this is what we got. We got a ton of dark oak, which is what this build is mainly going to be made out of. But I also got spruce to hopefully complement that. I also got a bunch of stone brick and I got some cracked stone brick just to help texture for the stone brick. And then as for the oak and birch, I do not know what I'm going to do with this yet. But I think if I use some stripped oak logs or maybe stripped birch logs, I can add to the build. And then we got plenty of glass, especially after we make it into glass panes. I have a plan to make kind of like a bridge, but but it's like our house kind of connecting these two spots right here and then having an entrance possibly coming out through the center while having oh gosh while having stilts like connecting it down into the actual cave that's at least my plan i'm trying to picture out how i'm gonna have it in my head but i guess we'll just see how it looks when it's all done let's get to building this We are now done with the build of our new base and the entrance to our base. Now this isn't the final product through this whole series I am going to be adding to it because it is in a cave so we can always just dig out new rooms and we're just going to expand it a lot but this is what we got so far. And here is what we got for the entrance. I actually really like the roof on this. We got stairs and then it goes up to and then we got more stairs and then it goes up to to cap it off. The roof is like super big compared to the actual build and especially since the only thing in there is just the stairway down into here which this is what it looks like from the outside originally i was gonna have glass on the roof but i decided to go with an actual angled roof just because it looks much much better from the outside than just like a flat roof i wasn't aiming for this but this does work just to walk across it works perfectly fine as a bridge and this is what our entrance looks like from the back. I do need to move all of my stuff on the inside because I haven't done anything to the interior, which I will show you that now. But this is what we got. You enter in and it's actually really empty. I want to figure out something to do in here. I may put like slabs with some stairs and then maybe a couple barrels, you know, just, just a little something so it's not super empty in this room right here. Then you walk down the stairs, which I decided with this whole build to texture it as we got dark oak and we got spruce and then we got stone brick and we got cobblestone and then I also got cracked stone bricks so I just textured everything so it's not just one solid block I really like how it turned out and you walk down here and this is what we got just a big empty open room for now we got windows on both sides and a window underneath and I, what the heck are you doing down there? I love how this came out. I'm gonna actually work on the interior here in a second, but I just wanted to show you what we got right now. I've been working on this for maybe an hour and a half to two hours, and I really like what we got. And also, I am going to expand this out, so we'll have like an opening here and just expand this out, and it makes like a whole nother room going into there or there. And I'm just super excited because if we look down here, I am planning on having this entire area be like my base so as the episodes go on we'll have more and more builds getting added into this and then one day in a future episode we can just stand here and look at all the builds we got down there or all the builds we got over there 
and this is where it all started. Also, I could put some other rooms back here. If I just break this open, I could go into the back and have more rooms going that direction. I'm gonna break open here, have more rooms going all around. I might have a ladder or a stair system going down so we can, you know, get our builds down there. Just being in the location that we're at, we just have so much potential to just expand and make this a really, really sick base. Now, one more thing I do want to do is I am going to add like support beams going down, connecting from there. I like the look of it, but I think if I added like a support beam there going all the way down, I think that would be really cool. Although it might be a little difficult because it does go down quite a lot and there are monsters down there. But we also got these mine shafts and I can also make like a room like that using the mine shaft. Having our base here, there is so much space and so so much potential for this base to just be insane. Before we do anything else, I want to start working on the interior. And this is what we have for our little pillars. I connected them going down, but I didn't make them go all the way down, but to the part where they turn in, I kind of made that. They are on different levels and I did do that on purpose. That one is just a little bit higher. I don't know, some, something about them being uneven, I think just adds a nice little touch. For our interior, I really didn't do too much only because I want to keep expanding and make like an entire room dedicated for our chests, for our farming, for our furnace smelting. So this is what what we got for now. It is still very, very empty, and I think I like this being empty just so it's very easy for us to access the view. And as I said, eventually I'll be breaking out here, going that way, maybe adding a furnace room, maybe adding a chest room, maybe having a wheat farm down that direction. I might have an animal farm somewhere, and then we can have tons of builds all around. Now, next thing I want to do is go mining, and I want to go mining because I've been using these stone tools for so long now, and we did get a full set of iron tools but those have all broken by now and I've gone through so many different sets of stone tools so I would like to get a fair amount more of iron now this isn't going to be a big mining trip this is just so we can go get some iron we're not going to be exploring the mine shaft section of things I want to either do that in the next episode or possibly the episode after that but for right now we are just strictly looking for coal and iron I'd be happy if we can get about 20 pieces of iron only because this is really just to hold me over until we go on an actual mining trip where we go looking for diamonds and iron. I'm not going to be picking up any copper as of now. Eventually, I'm sure I'll start using copper, but for now, I just won't be taking any. Perfect. This is what we love to see. Let's go. Oh. And these are going to be the last bits of iron we grab. Oh gosh. And let's make our way out of here. We got 24 pieces of iron, which is plenty for what I need it for. I just want new tools and some leftover for maybe shears and a bucket. But while I was down there, there is a really, really deep part that just looks super cool. And here we go, full iron tools. My goal is to eventually have this entire cave, including the mine shaft, our entire base. In today's episode, I want to branch off in this direction and build and complete a chest room and a bedroom. I also want to explore this whole cave and the entire mine shaft, mainly because I want the materials from mining, but also I want to get this whole area lit up. I also have a couple side projects, like kind of adjusting this little cliff hill right here, but you will see that 
that more towards the end of this episode. First things first, I do want to say thank you so much for the support on episode one of this series. As I am recording this, that video has 180 views and I have 24 subscribers. Thank you all so, so much. I just started this channel and to see amazing support like that, it really does mean a lot. First thing I want to do getting into this video is work on making our chest room. I want to get that done so after I go mining, I'll have an organized spot that we can store all of our loot. Let's get to working on this storage room. The chest room is now complete and this is what we got. We got the creeper face down for obvious reasons. I also put these lanterns in the roof. I would like to do more lanterns, but I actually have no more iron. So this is just what we got to work with for now. And then we got these chests. I definitely could have added a lot more chests if I didn't add the trap doors. But I do think the trap doors adds a lot to this chest room. I could have added maybe like 26 more large chests if I didn't do it this way but I think for looks the trap doors helps a lot now I am going to branch out of these two ways eventually I was going to branch out this way and make my room now but since I'm so low on iron and I would have to use a stone pickaxe I'm instead going to go mining and then we'll continue with making our bedroom afterwards I think this is everything we're gonna need to just get started I am going to need to smell iron while I'm down there but I do think I have everything I need to have a long mining exploration and today we are going to be exploring the entire cave plus the mine shaft as of now I don't even have a bucket of water so we'll have to get that while we're down here as well oh let's oh no way I don't, I, I don't even know how to react to this it's literally right at the entrance here and it is a skeleton spawner which is insanely good because we can build an xp farm and since it's a skeleton we'll be able to get plenty of bones which is just perfect that is just amazing I don't, I don't even know how to react to that that is just crazy but i think this episode we will be making an xp farm out of a skeleton spawner i'm not going to be picking up any of the tracks right now because it's so close i can always come back for when and if I need them. Okay, we got some gold. Uh, oh, aqua affinity, that's actually good. Pretty good chest for being our first chest. We're going to get our iron smelted now, just so we can make ourselves a quick pickaxe. Oh my gosh! <sighs> my heart is racing right now. Oh my gosh. Let's make our way down into this massive cave. Oh, hello. Oh gosh. We're now into the deep slate level. Can creepers not walk on tracks? Oh gosh. Another spawner. Another skeleton? A second skeleton spawner, which is crazy. And ooh, music disc. I'm not gonna mark the coordinates on this one just because we have the other skeleton spawner that is so much closer. And more diamonds. Oh. We're pretty high up now, so I do think I'm going to end our mining exploration right here. Whoa, I've never seen deep slate coal before. That's cool. We might be under an ocean because there are water particles falling through. Oh, here we go. An easy way out. And I believe our house is just in this direction. I actually think I'm completely lost. And I never wrote down any coordinates on where our base is at. All right, I know where we're at. That's where we farmed those dark oak trees last episode. So that means our house is just right over this direction. Here we are. This is all of the loot we were able to get from that mining exploration. We got two and a half stacks of iron, almost a full stack of gold, three different music discs, a little bit of redstone, a name tag is very nice, and 12 diamonds, which definitely isn't a lot, but it's still very cool to get diamonds. 
Something I do notice with the new caves is I found a lot more diamond veins, but they were just like literally just one diamond or two diamonds. I think the biggest vein I found is three and I think I found two veins twice and then the rest were all ones. But we now have 13 diamonds. From the looks of it, when I went exploring, I dropped down in that direction, but this whole area is still unexplored. These little specks of light are just from those vines, but I actually have not explored this area all around here. And we have the skeleton spawner just right in that little cliff right there. And we're definitely going to be making a skeleton XP farm next. But before we work on the spawner, I'm going to take our 13 diamonds. And with these 13 diamonds, I'm going to make my very first diamond pickaxe and a diamond sword and then with these eight diamonds ooh, never mind never mind i was going to make a chest plate but i actually want to use two of these diamonds for an enchantment table and we will be doing the enchanting most likely next episode we will work on an enchantment room but for the rest of this episode we're still going to work on my bedroom i still want to adjust the cliff up there and i want to get a skeleton xp farm going in order to build our xp farm i am going to need to go to the nether now the reason i want to go to the nether is to get soul sand just so I can make a water elevator for the skeletons to shoot up from. Now you do not need a water elevator for the XP farm but it will help it with efficiency. So I'm going to go and collect some obsidian, enough for a nether portal and for our enchantment room. And this episode I'm not going to have an actual build for the nether portal but next episode we will have an actual build get going for our nether room. There we go. I now have 18 pieces, which is enough for a full portal and for an enchantment table. And I think this is going to be a pretty good spot to put our nether portal for now. Now, I do think this is the way that's going to be to my bedroom. Let's go to the nether. Okay, and we spawned in a hole. This has never happened to me before. Now, this is pretty cool just because we're like completely safe, but this has literally never happened to me before. So let's make our way out of this hole. We only need one piece of soul sand. I'm not going to be exploring the nether too much in today's episode. I just need one piece of soul sand and we are good to go. Okay, yeah, I just mined all the way up to bedrock. Okay. Okay, let's just try mining straight out then. Because going up was definitely not the way to go, so I hope this is. Okay, well, I'm going to try and dig out another way because this definitely doesn't seem to be the way out. There goes our second iron pickaxe. And hope that if we carry on, we can finally get out of that pit that we're in. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is the first time I've ever been to a bastion, like ever. We're not exploring it this episode, but I do need that soul sand. Now I do have some wood and I have some ingots. Okay, we have just enough to make ourselves some boots, so we do not have to worry about the hoglins. We just need one piece and we're gonna head out. I think episode three is going to be a super interesting episode because in my next episode, I plan to do my first enchanting on the series. And also after finding that, I do plan on exploring my first bastion ever. We still got plenty of things to do for the rest of this episode, but I do think the next episode is going to be crazy. But now that we got the soul sand, let's get working on our skeleton XP farm. Our skeleton XP farm is now complete. So here is the entrance to this mine shaft. Right here is actually where the skeleton spawner is at. And then we make our way over here. I will be making an actual room like going all the way out eventually. But for now, we only got a room down in the spawner right here. We got the hoppers so their loot will be collected in here. And then I got extra chests just for some extra storage. But yeah, here is the spawner. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. And then the hoppers will just collect all of the loot for us. And I have a stone sword just so when they come down, I can start swinging at them. But this is our skeleton XP farm. And since it's literally, that's the spawner right there. And that's where we wait. It's literally like extremely close, which is just perfect. So thank you to Kmond for the design. And then basically I'll just sit here AFK for a while, let them all spawn in. And then afterwards I just... We're not going to be enchanting in today's episode, so I'm not actually going to sit AFK right now. On episode 3, I will sit AFK for a little bit, just to get my levels up so we can get a fair amount of enchanting done. And I do want to get my bedroom done fairly soon, because as you can see, the bed being here just has some issue, because monsters, I think, are either spawning right under there or just right up top. So I got a bed back here. And now the last thing I want to work on in today's episode is making our bedroom. Pleated the bedroom. This is what it looks like from the outside. I could have carried the logs all around like that i might do that i might not i don't know i did put that stone in there myself so it's kind of like that's like in the cave our entrance is still the nether portal i don't know if i'm going to change this or not but i kind of do like it except for every time when i walk through i hear like the noise but this is what we got for our bedroom I added a little light in the roof. We got some light on the walls. I'm lucky we got all that iron just so we can have lanterns now instead of torches. I also got our bed surrounded by some carpet. We got a nice blue flower. It's not a crazy view. It's nowhere near as good as a view as that building has, but I do like our little room and I do believe we'll be able to sleep here without any monsters interrupting us. And for what I wanted to get done next, Actually, it's night. So first, let's try and sleep and test out our new spot. Now, obviously, right off start, it's going to be good. But I'm just hoping by the time monsters are able to spawn, they're not close enough where it says monsters are nearby and I'm unable to sleep. But what I wanted to do is because this is so close, but I want to push this back, but I do not want to terraform this entire little mountain hill. I'm just going to push it back and it's going to look very unnatural, except I got all these different types of stones that I'm going to use to try and make it look much, much better. It's a little hard to explain, but once it's done, you all will see what I'm talking about. And as I picture it in my head, it does look very cool so our cliff is now complete i don't actually i, th I think that's what i'm just gonna call it you know just the cliff I, I i don't know but here is what we got i dug out all of this and then i bordered it up with cobblestone and then i texture it with deep slate and gravel and a sty cracked stone brick i just used a bunch of different types of stones and then i also threw in some stairs and some fences and i do think it came out very very nice and the main reason i did this is just just so we have some room right here because we were just so clumped up next to the little hill and I did not want to get rid of the entire mountain so I did this instead and I hope you like how it came out I know I do please be sure to let me know and for our skeleton XP farm this is what it looks like basically they're down there they shoot up here they get slid down there and then they fall down there into my little chamber and the most way they will be in the water so the Sun will not affect them and then when the Sun finally can affect them that's why I put these slabs over the glass on this side and now for today's episode we are going to be enchanting and if you remember in the last episode we found a bastion in the nether so we will also be conquering the bastion this will be my first time ever going to a bastion and i am definitely ready to get this episode going i do want to say thank you so so very much for 100 subscribers i uploaded episode one of the series which was my first video on this channel and we hit 100 subscribers just nine days later thank you so so much how could i forget last episode we also got ourselves a skeleton XP farm going. But the first thing I want to do in today's episode is go and get some more diamonds. We currently have eight back at the house, but two of those are going to go for the enchantment table. And before we go to the bastion, I definitely like to get some diamond armor. Again, I have never been to a bastion before, so I definitely just want to make sure that I'm prepared. We spent quite a lot of time last episode in mining, so let's just skip to the part where we get diamonds. Respiration 3. We are now on level negative 59. I am just going to continue on branch mining until I get around 20 diamonds. And there goes my last pickaxe. Oh, gosh darn it. I was trying to place a torch on the wall, but we were able to get 15 diamonds, which is nice. Oh, no. Or wait. 
Oh, ah. I was aiming for about 20. 15 is just right about there. And I have six diamonds back at our base that we can also use for armor or tools, which what I mainly want to do is make one diamond pickaxe, possibly two, and make some diamond armor just so I'm ready to head into the bastion. And with these diamonds, I first want to make a diamond pickaxe. I would also love to have a chest plate, and I think we'll also get some leggings. And then might as well do another pickaxe. Only so we can have one silk touch pickaxe and one fortune pickaxe, hopefully if the enchantments go right. And then we'll have two big pieces of diamond armor that we will also enchant. But before we enchant, we gotta work on the build for our enchantment room. And I got a comment saying that I should build a mushroom. I'm going to be building a mushroom that our enchantment setup is going to go in. That was from a comment from one of you. And as I say in every episode, if you have any builds or ideas for for the series, please be sure to let me know down in the comments. I would love to use your ideas more and more in this series. I think what I'm going to do is branch off in this direction and clear out a room where I'm going to try and transform that room into the inside of a mushroom. And on the inside of that, we will have our enchantment table. enchantment room is now complete. I got a fair amount of different things done. I wanted to make the enchantment room kind of looking like it's the inside of a mushroom. And the best way to do that is to get some mushroom blocks. But because I did not have silk touch yet, getting mushroom blocks was just impossible. So what I did was I did enchant. As you can see, my levels have dropped by maybe 30 or so. And I have been enchanting and then disenchanting, enchanting and then disenchanting. Just a ton of pickaxes, just a bunch of iron pickaxes until I finally got silk touch. Touch. I then got silk touch on an iron pickaxe and then I went over to the dark oak biome that we came by in episode one and then I collected a lot of different types of mushrooms in order so we can build our enchantment room and this is what we got so you walk down this and then we got a whole new hallway right here we got some lighting in the ceiling I got a lantern in the wall and then we also have a nice window and then if you turn right there is a staircase going down to our mushroom room and here we go here's our enchantment table i decorated it a fair amount i put up some vines because i think vines do look very nice except it may not make too much sense to have vines because if you have a vine inside your mushroom it's probably not a good mushroom but it makes the build look so much better so i will be keeping it i got the enchantment table down i do not quite have level 30 enchants yet i will be needing to get some more paper so we can make some more books but that'll be pretty easy to get we also got a grindstone which i use this to disenchant the iron pickaxes a lot i also got some barrels that i will be putting lapis and maybe books in and then over here i did create an anvil and we also got ourselves a crafting table please be sure to let me know on what you think about the enchantment enchantment build. I was thinking about maybe making a mushroom up on the surface, but since I want most of our builds to be in this cave ravine, I decided to do it this way instead, and I really, really love how this came out, and I really hope you all like it as well. Thank you for the idea on using a mushroom for this build. Sorry if that's not what you were thinking about when you said mushroom, but that's kind of my spin on it. Also, in other news, if you remember, I created two diamond pickaxes, one for a possible silk touch and one for a possible fortune. But I forgot that in our second episode, I created a diamond pickaxe. So I actually did not need to create this one. So right now we do just have three diamond pickaxes. But now that we got that done, I will be going and getting the rest of the paper to finish off our bookshelves. And I will be sitting AFK in the skeleton spawner until I get to maybe level 36, 39, somewhere in that range. 
And while that's happening, I will have sugarcane grow right there while I will be right down there. So as I'm AFK, this sugarcane will grow. And by the time I got all of my levels, I will be able to come out and have enough paper so we can make another bookshelf. So we can get some level 30 enchantments going. So I've been sitting here AFK for about 30 minutes. Now here and there I would see just like that, I, there is a skeleton that will just fall and die to fall damage. I don't know why that is. The majority of them do not do that as you can see, but yeah, some of them for some, some of them for some reason they will just fall and die. 30 minutes of waiting here and let's see how much levels we can get from five. Okay, up to level 16. So I will be sitting here for maybe 30 to 45 more minutes. We are now done getting experience. I can now get four level 30 enchantments if I want. And I noticed something very, very weird. At one point I sat AFK for one hour and I barely gained any levels. And then I started sitting AFK for maybe five minutes at a time, killing them almost as they come down. And I was gaining experience so much faster. I don't know if there's a thing where if there's too many monsters, the experience drops. Or if maybe I can't collect all the experience when there's so many monsters. When I was going in smaller bursts of killing the skeletons, I was getting much more than waiting a long time and then killing them. Now before we move on, I do need to go and collect our sugarcane. I have enough leather already, but I was short on some paper, but not anymore. And with these seven bookshelves, that definitely should be enough for us to enchant. We now have level 30 enchantments. I will make the bookshelves look a lot better. I'll add some here, add some here, put some up top. But just for now, this is what we got just so we can get level 30 enchantments. Now for our pickaxe, we do have an unbreaking three, which can be very good if it gives us efficiency, fortune, silk touch, or we can get unbreaking three on protection four. We're going to go conquer the bastion. I think starting off with protection four on our diamond chest plate is the best bet and there we go just protection four but i am still happy with that protection four on our leggings i'll definitely take that again just protection four but still very good and for the pickaxe efficiency three i will not be doing an efficiency enchantment unless it's efficiency four so i will pass on that looting two on our sword that can be very good if we get something else with it so i'm really hoping we get something else Bane of Arthropods and Knockback. Ugh. After doing our sword enchantment, our pickaxe now has efficiency four, so I will be taking a shot on this. I really, really hope it's not just efficiency four. Oh! <laughs> That is an amazing pickaxe. Efficiency four on breaking three and fortune three. That actually is the best pickaxe you can get from a level, just a base level 30 enchantment. This is the best you can get. So I'm super happy with that. We still have 30 levels left. Efficiency four. I could take a shot on that and hope for silk touch, but I'll see what the sword has. Sharpness three. I think I'm going to take a shot at the efficiency four diamond pickaxe and hope we get silk touch. Okay, fortune two. Uh. Our diamond sword now has unbreaking three and our third pickaxe has unbreaking three as well. Overall, I am pretty happy with what we got. We got a protection four chest plate, a protection four leggings and an efficiency four unbreaking three fortune three pickaxe, which is crazy. I was debating on disenchanting this, but I think I'll keep it and just use this pickaxe to clear out rooms because I definitely will need a workhorse pickaxe just to clear out space since we're always going to be digging into our cave ravine. I definitely need to make sure that I am wearing gold while I'm in the nether. So we will be wearing a golden helmet. I think we now have everything we are going to need. And here we go, going to the bastion we found in our last episode. Again, I have never explored the bastion or even been to a bastion before. Now I did go here a little earlier today, but I didn't explore. I just kind of reinforced our little bridge. And then I was down there and I was looking for some mushrooms just so like I can get some mushrooms, bone mill them, and then use that for our enchantment build. But I wasn't able to find any mushrooms here. And since I was able to go to the dark, Dark oak forest i was good on the mushrooms i have not broken into this but i do see like a little entrance now how i'm going to go about this is i am going to build up i'm going to build up and loot from the top going down just because i really oh gosh i hear monsters in there i really don't know how this works 
All right, there are golden blocks. I do know some things. I think the piglins will not attack you unless you start breaking their golden blocks or start opening their chests. So I think I'm pretty safe from them for now. Okay, we are now at the top and there is a little stairway. I have a golden helmet on. Okay, I think we're good, right? Yeah, we're good. We're good. There's another one. Yeah, I think we're good. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Okay, we were not good. That's my first death of the series. I did not think I would get attacked as long as I was wearing gold and as long as I didn't take their loot. But I guess the ones with the axes just attack you straight up. I wish I would have known that. Looks like we have to be more safe than we were. Oh gosh. Oh gosh, there's three of them. I'm beginning to think this was not a good idea. I don't have a pickaxe, but I'm going to break these blocks so they are unable to jump up here. Now, the one good thing about being in the nether is I can actually mine the nether act. Never mind, I don't pick it up. Oh no. Why did I do that? I'm going to go get some food and get some blocks, and then we are conquering this bastion. I really did not think that this was going to be difficult. Here's the strategy. Now I'm safe. I think I have everything back now. Now it's time to conquer. Yeah. We are going to take this nice and slow. They are so strong. Now let's see what kind of loot they have. Golden carrots, that can be helpful. Whoa, I've never seen this block before. Okay, let's make our way down. We made our way pretty far down and I did not see anything. We are now back at the top. I'm now going to go back to where I saw those gold blocks. I do hear them, they are really close. Okay, here we go. Whoa, what? I've seen speedrunners drop gold in holes and it like makes them all fall in a hole, but I did not drop any gold. They were just all grouped up there. Okay, let's see what we got. And a diamond shovel. That's actually pretty useful for us. Whoa. Oh my gosh. It gets so much bigger. Oh gosh. Okay, there are a lot down there. I see none around this level. I see a chest. Okay, let's see what kind of loot is in the chest. An iron sword with mending and an iron sword at smite. Soul speed one could be pretty good. I really, really do not want to die at this point because we're actually pretty deep into the bastion. Oh gosh. Oh no. No! Okay, we got all of our loot back. Wow. So I did switch the difficulty to peaceful. I'm sorry if that's kind of like me cheating, but I've died three times already. And I, 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 and we have some pretty bad news because this piglin picked up my diamond armor. I'm going to take out the piglin and I'm just going to hope he drops the armor. Okay, he did drop the armor. He, look at all the loot. He had all my stuff. But this does make me need to ask a serious question. If you all want, I can make a rule where I am not allowed to change the difficulty no matter what. Now, this whole time, I have had the difficulty on hard. But as you can see right now, I've died three times already. Things are just clearly a bit too difficult for me. So let me know if you think I should not be able to switch the difficulty at all. In the settings, there is a little lock where I can lock it there. I switched it to peaceful right now. It's been on hard. If you guys want, I can lock it on hard. Because I do understand if switching the difficulty to peaceful kind of seems like Cheating. But just please be sure to let me know if you want me to lock the difficulty on hard or maybe lock the difficulty on normal. I did leave the bastion. I did not loot anymore. I did see a couple other chests and a lot more golden blocks, but I did not take any of that. But I do think this is pretty important. So please let me know what you think I should put the difficulty at. If you think I should lock it at a difficulty, the difficulty is now going back on hard. Or maybe if you want a rule where after I die a certain amount of times, I can switch it to easy, but I cannot switch it down 
down to peaceful. Please be sure to let me know because I do think this is going to be pretty important for the series carrying on. Because right now we aren't in hardcore, so dying definitely is going to be a part of this let's play. But after dying three times within like 20 minutes, it shows that was just a little too difficult for me. But my thoughts right now are I will keep it on hard difficulty except maybe after three deaths I'm allowed to switch the game to easy whether it be on fighting the wither or the ender dragon. Those are my thoughts without your input so please I would love to see what you think. If the majority of you are saying that I should keep it on a certain difficulty or whatever the rule might be that is what we will go with. But if the comment section is pretty split I think I'll make my decision out of maybe the top two responses from all of you. As I said I want this to be a very interactive series and this is a pretty big spot where I'd love to get your input. The plan for today's episode. First off, I want to branch off in that direction just a little bit and make a drop all the way down to negative 59 because that is the lowest level before you hit bedrock. I also want to expand our base a little bit, making kind of like an outer path along this side. And down there, I think I want to get a farmland going. We are now on episode four and we still do not have any sort of farm. So I will be making a wheat, carrot and potato farm down there. We are also going to be building a little temple First things first, I want to go to the nether to get some soul sand, just so I can make a water elevator for my way up from when we're down at the very bottom. I did get so much useful information from all of you about how to conquer the Bastion or even useful information about my confusions about our XP farm. So I do want to say thank you for all of that information. I want to say thank you so, so much for 1,000 subscribers. It seriously is amazing. And the support you all have given me since I've started this channel and this series has been just crazy. And I truly, truly am thankful for it. I would spend more time saying thank you, but we need to get into this episode and we need some kelp for our water elevator that we're going to be needing to build. I'm going to branch out in this direction just a little bit. This efficiency for pickaxe makes digging out these rooms so much easier. I'm going to make one side a spot where I can just drop straight down and then I will have one side a spot where I will have the water elevator to make my way up. We have a geode right on our way down. I'm not going to be doing anything with the geode now, but it is right under our base and we can definitely come back to this at a later point. We are now one block above bedrock. Now this side is going to be the side with the water elevator. So I will be putting a soul sand there. And then on this side, we will just have a water bucket. So when we're up there, we can just fall and land right in there. Now I just need to build my way back up and then I'll go through placing kelp and the water and we will be good. Now I just drop way down here. And now I just need to get in here and fill this whole thing up all with kelp. Uh-oh. Oh gosh, okay. We're so close. Oh my gosh. And we are now good to go. And there, that is our dropper all the way down to negative 59. Now I do think next episode, we might actually be making a nice mine shaft all the way down here, just clearing out this entire area. But for now, we will leave this as it is. Next thing I want to do is actually make this into like an actual room, continuing this hall. And then I also want to branch out in this direction, kind of making a little bit of a path on the outside going kind of down there and also over there. drop room and the expansion path of our base is now complete. So first off, you walk down this direction and then we got our little drop spot for where we are going to have our mine shaft. The design is just like the rest of the base, just going with the dark oak and the spruce with some lanterns as lighting. I'm going to leave this like this. I do plan on expanding through here sometime, but for now, if we turn this direction, we have our pathway. We got the wall retainer that we used up there and I kind of copied that down here just at a smaller scale. I have a couple of ladders. I believe I have three of them through this entire stairway, but it just goes down with the slabs. Then we got a ladder right here. 
then it, we can wrap it around this direction. I do think eventually I will be doing something with this waterfall, so right now I kind of want to just leave that how it is. If we go straight this direction, this is where our skeleton XP farm is. The spawner's right in there, and then right in here is where we wait. Also, another project eventually is I will be making this into its own little room, probably using the same design as this, but for now we will leave it as is. If we take a left right here, we do have a nice stairway, and right here we have another one of those ladders, but this stairway goes all the way down to right here which will be like the top part this is what our base looks like from this angle i could do what i did there right here which is probably what i'm going to have to do i think that could make it look a lot better and the next thing i want to do is go down into where our mine shaft is going to be if you have any ideas on how i can add to make this better whether it's this part or one of the lower parts please be sure to let me know down in the comments i want to use a lot of your ideas through this entire series and a lot of you come up with some good ideas to help improve this world. But the next thing I want to do is go down and look for some diamonds because our workhorse pickaxe is almost all the way gone. Since we have fortune 3 on this pickaxe, even if we just find a couple, we should be good. Finally, diamonds! One, two, three, four, five... Five diamonds, I am very happy with that, especially when this is how far we went. Five diamonds turned into ten, which isn't the best, but it is double what we would have had. Next thing I want to do is work on the subscriber temple, which will be where I put your name if I use one of your ideas in the Let's Play. I'll write your name and what the idea was. But before we do that, I do want to have Silk Touch, so I'm going to get some experience in order to enchant my third diamond pickaxe with silk touch. Thank you for the tips on the XP farm. We are now level 34, and all I want is to get a silk touch enchantment on my diamond pickaxe. Here we go, testing out our very first enchantment. We do have unbreaking three, so I am going to take this and hopefully we'll get silk touch. Unbreaking 3 and Efficiency 4. I think what I'm going to do is disenchant this pickaxe and keep this as the workhorse pickaxe just because it also has Unbreaking 3 instead of a unnecessary fortune. There we go. Silk Touch Efficiency 4 Unbreaking 3. There is no way. These two pickaxes are the best base 30 level enchantments that you can get. Silk Touch will be good for a lot of things, but the reason I want Silk Touch right now is just so we can get some grass blocks to place some grass blocks down in the cave. Now what I want to build is the subscriber temple, which I think I might just clear out this rock right here and have the subscriber temple go right there. Let's get to clearing this out and working on the temple. Thank you all so much for 1000 subscribers. I'll continue to do my best on each video and your support support seriously does mean a lot to me. Now sadly this clip right here the replay mod does break a little bit for me as it ends pretty much right before I'm done digging this out but this is what we got. And here is our temple. Now temple is kind of a weird word for it just because of how it is just because it's underground so I didn't see too much point in putting walls and just making the outside would have looked very wonky but this is what we got. Now I got this idea from two comments pretty much and one of the comments said build it in a tree but when it said tree for whatever reason reason I thought it said temple so that's kind of where I got the idea to build it like this and in the other comment it said build it like a garden so I kind of mixed up those two ideas and this is what we got right here I have space for 29 different signs and basically as I've said this whole series I want this to be a very interactive series and if you have anything you want me to build or do in this series please be sure to let me know in the comments if I do use one of your ideas I will write your name on the sign like I will do right now. There we go. We got Prokilla and Bugs. And this is kind of what I took from their two comments. Now, usually I probably will just put one person per idea, but since I kind of mixed the two of their ideas, I decided to put them both down. Also, please be sure to be pretty creative with these ideas because some ideas I will not put you on the wall for. Like if you comment to go explore a village, but it's something that I already was going to do. I already have a couple really cool ideas like one of them is build a gunpowder farm and the build is going to be inside a creeper head using my actual head when i get around to that i will put the person's name up who created that idea so if you have any ideas for this let's play please be sure to let me know 
down in the comments. Next up, I want to get working on clearing out this area and kind of making it all flat land, but like with slight layers going up and making it all grass and all dirt, just so I can clear out a very nice space for some farmland. And this is probably going to take a little while for me, but it probably only will take maybe a minute in the video. And that will be where we have farms. And today we probably will just have wheat farms and carrot farms and potato farms. But then sometime in the future, I would like to get some animals down here and we can get some cow and sheep farms going on down here. I hope you like the subscriber temple, the subscriber garden. And without further ado, let's get on with terraforming this land and creating a farmland. got for where our farmland is going to be. As you can probably tell, I've really been liking the walls that we've been doing throughout the series. And this is what we got. Now, first off, I have been finding a fair amount of slimes that just spawn here. I think we might be in a slime chunk or it could be because there's so much open space. I really do not know. But basically my plan for this area right here is all of this will be wheat and potatoes. And then up at this top part, I want to have this top part be where we have animals possibly in a future episode i'll take the stairway from there and just bring it kind of down here so i can bring animals down here and then we can have cows and sheep and we now have a lot of different stones the three chests that i have up in my storage room are now completely filled i am so low on food i've been living off of eating the kelp which I didn't even know was a food source until Dallas Med in his newest video was talking about it. And that's where this came from. I do need to start planting the wheat. I have a ton of bones so I can make bone meal just so I can bone meal the seeds and get our farm off to a very fast start just because I am insanely low on food. what we got for our farm. I set up these lampposts right here to give us some light. I could have made them just a little bit higher just so like my head's like not right at the lantern, but I didn't want the light to be too far away from the ground. And as you can see, some spots with lights do not have the little lampposts. And I did that just because I thought that if I had too many lampposts, it could actually take away from the build. Also, I do want to add some scarecrows in here, but I do not believe we have pumpkins. I am now completely out of food. There is no food left in the chest. So so we definitely need to get this farm going. I have all of these bones here for bone meal. So I am just going to bone meal the heck out of these plants. And I will see you when we got this entire farm covered. There we 
go. All of our crops are now planted. I have wheat on these first two layers and then I have potatoes on this top layer. I think I might make this layer carrots when I do get carrots, but for now, this is what we got. And I finally have the ability to have food. There we go, 51 pieces of bread. It took us way too long to get our very first farm going, but I'm happy we got it now. Please be sure to let me know what you think of this farm. If there are any ways I can help with the lamp post or the pathway or any of the setup please please be sure to let me know there is always room for improvement and if there's something you don't like please be sure to let me know so I can try and fix it and make it look better also while I was doing all of the digging for these two areas I did enchant a shovel and I did get efficiency four on the shovel fortune three is okay for a shovel I guess fortune three for a shovel pretty much means when you mine gravel you get flint like every single time but the efficiency four really is what what I wanted. I will throw up a before and after picture on our farm. It was a lot, a lot of digging, and I think the before and after picture is going to make it just look even more crazy. Just this entire episode was a lot of digging. I do plan on expanding this outwards, just lowering this grass platform and carrying it all around on this underneath side of our cave. Eventually, I want to get an entire city going with a bunch of different houses and have villagers down here. But we are still very early on in this series and I think we are making quite a nice amount of progress. I worked just a little bit off camera and I got a water elevator going. This water elevator is literally just going right to our base because that stairway pathway could take just a bit too long at times so we have a nice water elevator that leads us right here so in today's episode we are going to be working on making a little bit of a pathway around this area we are also going to be working on our skeleton xp farm hall just right here i also want to get our mine shaft actually done along with finding a village and hopefully bringing villagers back to make a villager trading hall we have a lot to do so let's get right into this the first thing I want to do is go to the nether so we can get some bone blocks so we can work on our hall for our skeleton XP farm. And as you can see, we have a couple of these around our spawn in the nether. We have 49 bone blocks. I'm going to actually see if I can make some from bones. Don't know if these are a block that you can only find or if you actually can make it if you have bones. Yeah, I do not think you can make it. Ah, luckily for us, since we have that skeleton XP farm, we can make quite a lot. Since our stone chests were getting really filled, I decided to turn the chests just so we could double our storage space. What I want to do for this is actually very simple. I first want to open this hallway, and then I want to dig out these walls. And I think we actually could do something really cool with that. If we take ink sacks with some glass, we can make black dye. And then with this, we can make black stained glass. And I think if we place black stained glass, light actually does not go through. So I do not think we'll have to worry about losing efficiency for our farm. It does look like light is kind of getting through. I do not know if light actually does get through. And this is just hurting how efficient our farm can be. And now I want to go through and make this kind of like we're going through the inside of a skeleton. And I will be outlining all of this with cobblestone just because that is what a monster spawner is made out of. And here is our skeleton XP farm hall. Here we go. I got the bones kind of outlining the hallway as we go. I got the bones facing two different directions for texture. And I also added in some mossy cobblestone because that's how a dungeon usually is with normal cobblestone and some mossy cobblestone. So that's what I did here. I do like how this came out. Thank you for the idea. And let's get on to our next project. I now want to clear out a pretty big area for where our mineshaft hub will be. So what I want to do is just just dig out all of this area around here and then create these little doorways for where we will be branch mining. Okie dokie, we are now done with digging out the initial room for our mineshaft. Now I just want to add a couple of chests in the corners and put up some logs along with some stone slabs. And that will be it for our mineshaft hub. Hey, this is what we got. Right now I am debating on whether or not I want to do something with the floor. Couldn't break all of the floor just because some of it is bedrock. I hope you enjoy our little mineshaft hub. Let's get looking for a village. 
village. We are going to head off in this direction. And the reason for that is because we came from that direction. Over there is a lot of ocean and down this direction, we still do not know what is down here. So I will be making a boat and we will go look for a village. While we go off for this village, I do want to say thank you so much for 2000 subscribers. Our last episode, we just hit 1000 and now we are at 2000. Thank you all so, so very much. Hopefully we can find a village right at this water stream just so I can boat the villagers back here because that would just be perfect for us. Oh, we have a village way down there. I turned my render distance up to 30 chunks just so hopefully while we're up there, we can see a village and we did. Now it is a little far. So transporting the villagers might be a bit of a pain, but we only do need to transport two villagers. We have made it to the village. I do plan on making a village at our base. I did find a brewing stand. So I think what we can do instead of transporting the villagers is cure some zombie villagers. Cause I think that might be easier than getting a villager in a boat and somehow getting the villager through all of this and down to our base. And after we cure two zombie villagers, we will be able to start our own village breeder. And after that, we will be good to make our villager trading hall. I then stayed up all night fighting monsters, hoping to come across two zombie villagers that I can trap. And by the end of the night, I did not end up finding any zombie villagers, but only then is when I realized in order to make the potion of weakness that we need to cure the zombie villager, I'd need blaze powder. And since I do not have blaze powder, I made the decision to transport the villagers the entire way through. I have now transported both of the villagers back to our base and I have made a villager breeder. I was debating on showing the building process or not, but it's really just digging out a room and getting the two villagers in and that's pretty much it. So we got the villager breeder right here. I have two fence gates so they cannot exit. And here we go. We currently have three villagers. As you know, we transferred the two villagers. Basically, I just placed this composter. I got some carrots in here. I tossed them a bunch of carrots and now we have a baby. I'll just need to fill this entire room up with a bunch of beds and I did different color beds. It's not necessary, but I do think it does make it look a lot better. So I'll have to get a lot more beds in here. We will continue to get more and more villagers. I didn't have carrots until now, but when I did find that village, I was able to get four carrots and I planted them all around here. And luckily, since I have so much bones down here, up there, and in our XP farm, we are very, very good on getting our carrots. We pretty much now have an infinite supply of carrots, which is perfect because when we trade with villagers and we want to get more emeralds, the villager up there does trade carrots and we could probably get a couple more villagers that would trade carrots. So we are going to be able to get a lot of emeralds and make a lot of good trades. Now that we have all of these carrots, I'm going to go get some emeralds. Okay, 16 emeralds right there. And it's already working. We just got another kid. Wow. Oh. It's already working, which is great to see. While I was over there farming the carrots, they apparently uh, got, got making another kid, yeah. So this is good. I will continue to fill this place with beds. And while they're breeding in the background, I actually will get started on making the little pathway right here and working on our villager trading hall. Let's get into this.
our villager trading hall is now complete. First off, I am going to keep the villager breeder going only because eventually I do want to make an underground village and I can use these villagers instead of using ones from the trading hall to do so. We got this nice pathway going all around. I did also start a melon farm. This is only a temporary melon farm. The villager that I trade carrots with also trades emeralds for melons. So I will be keeping this just for a little bit until I get to making an actual melon farm. And this is what we got for our trading hall. I connected it with some stilts, also connecting it to the roof and kind of going into the cave back in that direction. I have it completely filled with 20 villagers. I currently haven't given them any jobs. And that is because I want you to let me know what jobs and what trades I should be looking for. There are a couple I know I already want to get, like an efficiency villager or a mending villager, but this is my first time making an actual villager trading hall, and I pretty much have never done any actual trades with villagers like this, so please be sure to let me know what the best trades are and best jobs that I should be looking for in a villager. I will not be doing any trading with villagers in this episode, but at the beginning of next episode, I will go through your comments and I will try to get the best trades on the 20 villagers that we have here. Pretty soon we will fill this area in and our base is coming along very nice. Making our way to our skeleton XP farm, I actually went through and added soul sand and chains. I meant to do that the first time, but I kind of forgot. I really, really like what the soul sand adds to this build. That's all the soul sand I have now, but I will be collecting more and adding some more soul sand throughout this haul. Now I did go ahead and set up some of the trades for our villagers. Here are our farmers that do buy carrots for emeralds and buy pumpkins for emeralds. And then Fletcher's right here buy sticks for emeralds which is extremely useful. And then I got a bunch of librarians going. Now this librarian has infinity. I already did get infinity. We only needed one infinity book. And someone did tell me that if the villager does have a bed, I can break this and it will reset the enchantment for them. So I will try that with this villager just because infinity is something you only need once. Also luckily got a mending villager. I already did buy one mending book, but we will be needing many, many more mending books. So we got very lucky with this villager right here we have a silk touch villager we got a fire protection three villager and a sharpness five villager this villager i still do not have anything yet it's projectile protection four so i wasn't going to re-roll it because i didn't know if i wanted that or not now we still do have two open spaces four more villagers i might make them librarians let me know what you think i should do with these two extra villagers also i might use a bed and reset the sharpness five villager because we only will need that one time for our sword there were also a lot of comments telling me that if I tint the glass using amethyst, light will not get through. So that is what I did. We now have a tinted window that we used amethyst for. So now light does not get into our skeleton XP farm. I will be doing a lot more trading after we get some more emeralds and level up some of these villagers, especially some of these villagers like the toolsmith or like the weaponsmith. And today we are going to be building an underground village. This is a project I've wanted to do since I found this cave and I am definitely ready to clear out all of this area down here and make it into an entire village with some farms, some houses, and of course villagers. So let's first get started by clearing out all of this area right here. Before we get into that, I do want to put mending on our workhorse pickaxe just because this is the pickaxe we are going to use to dig out all of the area down there and it would be nice to not have to keep repairing it it with diamonds and instead just put mending on there we go now i will be able to get mending on all of our tools and armor eventually just because we do have that villager and you know what now that i think of it what we can actually do is combine our efficiency four unbreaking three fortune three pickaxe with our workhorse pickaxe originally i did not want to use this pickaxe just to mine out a bunch of area but since we can now have mending with it we will not have to worry about our pickaxe breaking 33 to get mending fortune 3 and efficiency 5 along with our unbreaking 3. I'm going to go get those three more levels and then I will be back to get that enchantment.
There we go. We will now combine the two pickaxes and whenever the durability gets low, I will just head back over to our XP farm and heal our pickaxe up. Efficiency five, unbreaking three, fortune three, and mending. Also, I do want to give an update on our helmets and on our boots. So with our diamond helmet, we have respiration three and aqua affinity. Both of those enchantments are from books that we got in a previous episode. And on our boots, we have soul speed one, just another enchanted book that we got from a previous episode. Eventually, feather falling will be super, super nice to get. Now that we have our pickaxe ready to go, let's dig out all of this area right here. Now that we have the entire bottom area all cleared out, it is time for us to start working on building our villager houses. Now we have this massive wide open area wrapping all the way around here, going down into a bit of a lower area and then you can also go back up this direction. I will be cleaning some areas up like the outside over there and this top part right here. Once we're able to get moss blocks, we can make this area look so so much better and also as you can see I left this area open right here and that is because right there I want to make a statue or a little village monument off of an idea that one of you can give me so if you know any build idea that I can do right here as a little monument or a little statue that I can do for kind of the center of our underground village, please be sure to let me know down in the comments. We also have so much space left in our cave. Right now, I think I will just fence this area off. Down in the future when we want to expand our base and need more space to build, this is a massive, massive cave. Before we get to working on our villager houses, I do want to place a bed in here and see if I can re-roll this villager because we only need one infinity book and we have that. Okay, he has the bed, he's sleeping now, I'm going to break that. Now I think when we wake up in the next morning he will lose his infinity trade. And it doesn't look like he actually lost the trade. So it looks like once you trade, they're locked in that. I'll just leave the bed in there and I'll let him free roam. And in the night, he'll come back and go to sleep himself. I'm going to grab some wheat. And if I happen to come across some cows, I will collect them. But we need a bunch of wood to get started on this village. <laughs> Also, an update on my axe, I do have efficiency 5 on my axe. I did enchant two diamond axes sometime in our last episode, and both of them got efficiency 4, so I just combined the two axes to get efficiency 5, which has been incredibly useful for me because I have been trading a lot of sticks for emeralds, so I've been up here quite a lot getting wood. We now have four stacks of dark oak and five stacks of spruce. I do hope this is enough. I also have a ton of deep slate that we can use for our village. But first, let's go to sleep and then go look for just two cows to start our cow farm. There we go. Our base is way over there and these are the first cows that I've come across. And there are quite a lot of cows over here. Now it's starting to make sense why there were no cows anywhere else. Oh. 
Here we go. Go down! What the heck? <laughs> Get down. I didn't even know they could climb. Get down, please, please. Oh my gosh. Okay, now that we got the two cows, which was way more difficult than it should have been, let's get down to where our farms are at and work on making a cow farm. Okay. Oh, they were trying to get some XP. I'm just going to wall them in like this. I am going to get some cobblestone and fences and kind of do what I did right there, but I will do that right here. And our cow farm has officially started. There we go. Let's knock this little pathway out. And before the episode ends, I will come back and make an actual wall for the cow farm. Now let's get working on building a bunch of different houses and getting this village started. This is what we got for our first villager home. I'm going to go through and make each building. And then afterwards, I will go through and add glass and doors and do the inside. But first, I got a bunch of different little house designs that I want to add throughout this entire OP. Okay, each building for this underground village is now complete. In total, we have seven different buildings, all different shapes and sizes, and I just used wood and deep slate. But I used the wood and deep slate in different places and used multiple types of wood and multiple types of deep slate to make every house look not the same but they are all still similar. And now what I want to go through is go through and make a path connect. Underground Village is now complete. We have seven different houses and then all around in the area, I bone milled the grass, added some flowers, added these little light post trees. I really like the way these actually came out. Also for lighting along the pathway, I just did some fences with a lantern on top. I think that was just a very simple way of doing lighting and it looks much better than just having a torch on the ground each house does have stuff in it i gave each house a crafting table a furnace a chest and a bed i didn't really decorate the interior because we will never ever be going on the inside of the houses and these villagers are not going to be trading with us so i don't see the point in giving oh i don't see the point in giving them an amazing interior i do really like what we got going we got villagers all around i added three different farms like this and they just have like potatoes carrots and wheat and i do gotta say i really really like like this house that wood stump is not connected to the house it's a part of the wall but just this house right here I really really like how it came out and it's definitely a house I would like to do again sometime in the future please be sure to let me know what you think of our underground village again this boulder right here will be cleared out or at least look a lot a lot better when I get an idea from one of you on what statue or monument or type of fountain you want me to build there we'll be tearing this all apart or carving something out and just making making that look a lot, a lot nice. I was going to make an automatic sugarcane farm, but you do need quite a lot of iron for that. And since I do not have the iron for that, I actually will not be making that in today's episode. But I do believe in our next episode, we will be making an iron farm. So if you have an idea on what I should build around the iron farm, please be sure to let me know. Also, I want to thank you all so, so much for 3,000 subscribers. Each episode, we are growing more and more, and it seriously does mean so much. And after I was done building the underground village, I did nothing with this big chunk right here. And that is because I wanted to know what all of you wanted me to put here. There were a lot of people who said to build an iron golem there. But the comment that I liked most was to build a bell there. As you know, the bells only are placed in villages. So in today's episode, we will be clearing out this big boulder right here and building a massive bell. Along with doing that, we will be making a bunch of different farms, including an automatic sugarcane farm, an automatic carrot farm, a melon farm, a pumpkin farm, an iron farm, and a gunpowder farm. Yes, a lot of farms. And as you can see, we are wearing a different skin. And that is because this is the Halloween version of my skin. Instead of going with the all white and green, we now have black and and orange to represent Halloween. I'm now going to go head over to the nearest village to grab a bell because I actually did not grab the bell when I was there last. Because my plan is to place the bell right by where I'm going to build the bell and then copy the bell that's on the floor and try to build it. After we're done with that, it will be time for us to get started on the many, many different farms we have.
Our massive village bell is now complete. And this is what we got for our village bell. Now the coloring is definitely a little off. I tried to texture it with concrete powder and gold. And then I also have three different types of stones for the outer pillars. Every pixel on the bell is one block for the massive bell. So it is just about perfectly sized in scale, except there would be four blocks underneath here. While right now I do only have one. And that is just because since we're under the cave, it is very difficult to get a build like this. But overall, I do think it came out pretty nice and it definitely does fit with the theme of the village. If you have an idea on how I can make the bell better, please be sure to let me know. Now it is time for us to get working on all of the farms we want to do. I want to get a pumpkin farm, a melon farm, and a carrot farm done. And then after that, I will get working on the iron farm and then the creeper farm. Now I am going to get working on building an automatic carrot farm and an automatic sugarcane farm. Both of these farms will be very, very helpful for trading with villagers. All four of the tutorials I use in this video will be linked down in the description. Our first three farms are now complete. First off, we have our automatic carrot farm. I built it right over here. I thought this was a pretty nice spot to put it. Basically, these two farmer villagers will farm all of the carrots. They will then throw the carrots to this villager. It will go into the hopper and then down into these chests. And in total, as of now, we do have nine stacks of carrots. And all of those carrots were getting built up while I was just working in the background. This is going to be extremely useful for our villager trading. I did have some trouble transporting that second villager. Next up is our automatic sugarcane farm. So as you walk up the stairs, we have a vine here that takes us right here where we have a minecart that will keep going back and forth collecting sugarcane. So far, we only have 37 sugarcane, but that's only been collecting while I was working on our pumpkin farm. And finally, our our pumpkin and melon farm. So if we walk down this direction, I have a little doorway right here. And here is our pumpkin and melon farm. It's not automatic. I didn't check if you can make an automatic farm. This is definitely the least complicated farm out of the three farms that we built. We have melons that will grow on here and here, and then we have pumpkins that will grow on here and here. And this is just another farm that will be very useful for trading with our villagers. And now it is time for us to get working on our iron farm. So I'm going to pull up a tutorial, get all of our stuff together, and then get building this iron farm. I first started by clearing out a little area. And then I built the little rooms for each villager. I then went down to collect our villagers. And this process took me over an hour just setting up all the rails and failing over and over. So I put a ton of different powered rails and it was much, much easier. Afterwards, I had to get the one zombie that we need for this and I named him. And then it was time to finish the build for the iron farm. And now our iron farm is finished. Every single tutorial that I will be using in today's video will be down in the description. We got three villagers up there, a zombie with a name tag, and it will continuously spawn iron golems, dropping them into here, giving me iron. Now it is time for us to get to this build. This build idea was from one of you, and that was to put this inside a giant iron block. Before I can get to that, I need to get a bunch of sand and a bunch of gravel so I can 
can make concrete. I could wait and possibly use actual iron to make this, but I think it will look much better with a gray concrete and a white concrete. I still haven't decided if I'm going to do two iron blocks stacked on top of each other or just do one big iron block around. Which and we have finished our massive iron block. I did what I did with the bell and I placed the block and I just tried to replicate it. I think the dark spots are a bit too dark, but I don't know if there was a lighter block that's not as light as the white stained clay. And I did put stone slabs on the top because there were some iron golems spawning up there and then like falling down. But I do think with how it's built, it does not slow down the efficiency for the iron farm which is perfect. I did not put a roof. I'm pretty sure if I put a roof, then the iron golems will just spawn on top of the roof and that will just end our iron farm. As we were building it, we were able to get almost six stacks of iron. And please be sure to let me know what you think of the build. Next up, we are going to be building our gunpowder farm and the idea for the build that... The idea for this build was to build it inside of my creeper head. Thank you so much for that idea. I fell in love with this idea the second I saw it. Now, sadly, the replay mod did just end right here. I have no idea why, but as I was getting the replay, it just cut off. So I'm sorry that you can't see the rest of the building process. Our creeper farm is now complete. I did build my head around the creeper farm. I do have a tower that has a ladder that goes all the way up there so I can sit there and be AFK while I wait for the gunpowder because I'm pretty sure the creepers do only spawn when I'm up there. And eventually when I do get Elytra, I'll be able to break that entire tower going up there and I'll just be able to fly up there. So that giant pole is just temporary. Now the coloring for the face is off the light blue and the dark blue is about the closest colors that i could get to match my face i think i could have used the cyan but there isn't like a darker version of that so the border of my head would have been a little weird and just the sizing and proportions are definitely off but i do think it did come out pretty nice and thank you so much for that idea now to get in i do just right now have a little entrance on the side where i can go up this ladder and sit afk while i wait for gunpowder and then to collect my gunpowder i have this little room just right here that we walk down and then right now I do only have a stack and a half but again I do not believe the creepers actually spawn unless I'm like much higher up and when I first built it I did set afk just to make sure it works but in today's episode we are going to be getting our very first netherite of the series before we do that I do have a couple of things I want to do like move our nether portal into an actual nether room I will be clearing out this little spot behind this waterfall and we will have our nether room there I also want to add mending to all of our our armor and all of our tools and then heal our armor and tools afterwards we'll make our nether room and then go on the hunt for netherite time to check out our automatic sugarcane farm i have no sugarcane in our chests and we got a nice amount of sugarcane here we will need some leather to make some books so i will go ahead and breed our cows and then collect some leather now that we have books i will also be collecting some carrots oh yeah this automatic carrot farm is perfect now time to get some mending now that we have loads of mending books, we'll need to put mending on all of our armor. We have a sharpness five villager and I do want to get a sharpness five on our sword. Before I add sharpness five to our sword, I would like to enchant a diamond sword just to see what we can get as a level 30 enchantment. Let's add mending to our armor. All of our armor now has mending. I will also add mending to our sword after we get a level 30 enchantment. And then we'll also add sharpness five onto our sword. So I will take two diamonds for a new sword. And I also want to take four diamonds to enchant another pair of boots so I can try to get feather falling four. There is an unbreaking three for level 30 for our boots. So I will try to get that. I also at some point need to get an unbreaking three villager just so I can add unbreaking three to all of my armor and tools. I will be back once I heal up all of our armor and all of our mending tools as well as get to level 30. There we go. Now that we are level 30 and all of our armor is fully healed along with our tools, let's enchant our diamond boots with the unbreaking three and hopefully get a feather falling four. 
Fire Protection 3. We definitely do want Feather Falling 4, so I will be making another pair of Diamond Boots because having Fire Protection 3 will still be nice to have. I will now re-roll this pair of Diamond Boots until we can get a Feather Falling 4. I've disenchanted the boots a bunch and I still only could see an Unbreaking 3 as the best level 30 enchantment. Now it's time for us to sit AFK yet again. Now let's enchant our diamond boots one more time with, I could have swore the last time I checked, they were on Unbreaking 3. So I will re-roll just two times. There is a Feather Falling 3 that I will take. I re-rolled a couple of times more trying to get a Feather Falling 4 and I couldn't find that. So let's just take a Feather Falling 3 and then Breaking 2. And we will now combine these boots with these boots. We just need two more levels to get Soul Speed and Mending on our boots. We now have Fire Protection 3, Unbreaking 3, Feather Falling 3, Soul Speed, and Mending on our Diamond Boots. I have no levels, so I will be adding Mending and Sharpness 5 on our Diamond Sword a little later. I will also eventually get an Unbreaking 3 Villager. But now it is time for us to get clearing out a little room behind our Waterfall, and then we can start in a build. Here is our nether portal room. It is right behind this waterfall and we have our interior. I have this part open right here because I will be putting obsidian here for the portal. Also, it is opened here. So I am going to have to go under here and kind of clean up like the bottom area just so you can't see all of these random blocks from down there. I used a lot of blocks from a geode as well as adding vines and mushroom blocks because I really do like how that looks in our enchantment room. Our portal is going to be just a little bit bigger than a regular sized portal will be so I will need to collect some more obsidian. I now have 12 obsidian plus the obsidian that we will be breaking from our old portal and that should definitely be enough. Now I do hope when we spawn into the nether I hope our spawn is the same as it already is because I do like that little cubby that we got in the nether. Um, okay. I think our portal might not be lighting up because there is water just right above here. Okay, maybe our portal needs to be perfectly even for it to be activated. Seriously? I am completely lost on why this is not working. If anyone knows why I cannot light the portal when it is this size, please be sure to let me know. I covered the water at the top, that didn't work. I made it much bigger, that still doesn't work. I will say I do not have the corners filled in, although since you don't need to fill the corners in regularly, I didn't think I need to do that now, but I guess I could give it a try. Okay, all of the corners are now in and it still does not work. Okay, I didn't think it was that, but I just wanted to make sure. Okay, and the portal will not even activate like this. So maybe you cannot start a portal next to an amethyst block thing. Because even a regular sized portal for some reason does not work. Oh, oh gosh darn it. It could be. It's, 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 it's this vine, isn't it? I, it, it's, it's that vine, isn't it? Okay, yeah, it was the vine. Gosh darn it. Okay, I didn't even notice the vine. Now that we have our portal, it's a bit taller than I was going to have it. I may just knock it down one, but I want to see if our spawn is the same as it was. I really, really hope it is. And it is. That is perfect. Now when we exit, will our spawn be where we just set it? Okay, perfect. Oh my gosh, what the heck? Why are they here? Okay then, um, I'd really rather not fight them. I do not want to get bad omen and start a raid because they might think I'm at a village because all the villagers and beds I have. I'm gonna make a run for it. Oh gosh, okay. I'm gonna go milk a cow, then fight the pillagers, and then drink the milk instantly. And hopefully I'm far enough away from our villagers that it will not start a raid. And that's what I'm talking about when I say I want to clean that up a little bit, just because that is, you know. Let's go show these pillagers who's boss around here. What the heck are they doing? He's trying to leave. He doesn't even want to fight anymore. 
Okay, and here's the last one. All right, here we go. We got to drink the milk as fast as we can. So we're going to just punch him with the milk. Come on, come on. And there we go. Okay, as long as we do not start a raid at our base, I am perfectly fine. With our creeper farm that we made in our last episode, I did sit AFK for a while afterwards. And we now have almost 12 stacks of gunpowder. So now we will need to get about 12 stacks of sand. And then it will be time for us to make a bunch of TNT so we can go find a lot of agent debris. Okay, and there is all the TNT we can create a little over two stacks. Actually, we can create more. I have gunpowder that I got from last episode. Two and a half stacks of TNT. Never mind, I can create even more. Okay, now that's all of our TNT. Now we'll head into the nether, mine down until we get to Y level 14, and then it will be time to start our netherite mine. We are now on level 14, and this is where our netherite mine will be. I believe the best way to do this is just to place a TNT one away from another TNT. I did forget my flint and steel, so I will go and grab the flint and steel. I now hope I'm far enough, so I will just place the TNT. That is almost three stacks of TNT placed. I still have 18 more, so once I get to the very end, I may just go like 18 more that way. But it is time for us to light this and see how much Agent Debris we can get. I do have a goal for Agent Debris I want to get, and that is 40. So I can get a full set of netherite armor and a full set of netherite tools. Plus, I have an extra pickaxe that I would like to make netherite. But if we get more, then that's just perfect. Also, I want to say thank you so, so much for 4,000 subscribers subscribers and let's see how much agent debris we can get I already see one I already see two time to mine some agent debris oh yeah So out of three stacks of TNT, we were able to get 17 agent debris. I used pretty much all of it going that direction and then I just now used 20 going that direction. Since we are only just about halfway there, I will be wanting to get maybe about three more stacks of TNT. So I will see you in maybe three hours. Uh, I don't know. I have now been sitting AFK for two hours. And I'm going to see how much gunpowder we now have. So just under two stacks of TNT. And I definitely do hope that this will be enough to get 23 more ancient debris. So I'll do what I just did and I'll dig off in a straight line. And we will see how much ancient debris we can get with almost two stacks of TNT. Well, I was only able to get four more ancient debris from those two stacks of TNT. So I will now go sit AFK for probably two more hours, then come back and do this same exact process. After sitting AFK for about another two hours, I went into the tunnel, continuing to look for more ancient debris. And sadly, I wasn't able to find any. Our first tunnel, we found 17. Second tunnel, we found four, which is a huge drop off. And now we have found zero. Either I got very lucky in the first tunnel or I'm doing something wrong I don't know since we did get no ancient debris that time I will be turning some tools and some pieces of armor into netherite because I've been sitting afk at that gunpowder farm for about six hours total today and we are just not having that much luck getting ourselves netherite if you do have any tips on how I could find netherite more consistently please be sure to let me know because it just seems like whatever I'm doing it's just not going right that first go around where we found 17 I thought it was gonna be like that the whole way but but since then, we tried it two more times and only were able to get four more pieces. Since our sword is not yet enchanted, I do not believe I will be making a netherite sword. But in between this episode and next episode, I will sit AFK for a while just to get a bunch more gunpowder. So in our next episode, we can finish off our netherite tools and armor. But for now, let's go ahead and make ourselves 
four netherite ingots and I actually could make a fifth one. I messed the math up in my head a lot, but in a good way because we now have an extra netherite ingot. Now I definitely will be making our diamond pickaxe netherite efficiency five unbreaking three fortune three and mending definitely will be making that netherite. Also, I think making our chest plate netherite will be pretty important. I actually will not make our boots netherite quite yet because I will try to enchant another pair of diamond boots for feather falling three, then combine those so we can have feather falling four. So we will not make our boots netherite. Not yet, at least. I will make our helmet netherite. I will also make our pants netherite. And since we have one more left for this episode, I will be making our axe netherite. And today is the day we will be taking on the ender dragon. But I do have a couple things I want to do before that, like finish getting my tools and armor netherite, along with checking out a nether fortress that I found in the last episode. And after we take on the ender dragon, I do plan on also getting elytra by the end of this episode. First things first, I do want to enchant our diamond sword. I do have a sharpness five and a mending book, but I first want to get a level 30 enchantment, hopefully with unbreaking three on it. So I will enchant and disenchant until I get a level 30 sword that does have unbreaking three. Here's an Unbreaking 3. We just got Unbreaking 3, which honestly isn't the worst thing because we will be adding Sharpness 5 and Mending. And there we go. Our Unbreaking 3 Mending and Sharpness 5 Sword is done. I did get a lot of useful tips on our Netherite Mine. Like I could space the TNT three blocks apart, which that's very useful. And some others said I don't even have to use TNT and I can use beds or I can just mine out with like an Efficiency 5 pickaxe. But since I sat AFK for a while and now have a ton of gun powder. I will just be going mining for netherite using the gunpowder since I already waited for so long. So let's go get some sand. We'll be down in the mine and since we did this whole process a lot in our last episode, let's just do this real quick. All right, and after using all of the TNT that we had, I now have 15 ancient debris which will be enough to turn my sword my shovel and my boots all into netherite there we go oh now that we are fully geared up with netherite let's go check out that nether fortress and here's the nether fortress that i found in our last episode okay we have made our way into the nether fortress and the main reason i want to be here is so we can find a blaze spawner so i can make eyes of ender we were climbing up a leg of the fortress. I do hear blazes. I'm hoping it's a spawner. Okay, there's one blaze. It does not look like it's a blaze spawner though. I think I have explored this entire nether fortress and it does not look like there is a blaze spawner. There is a pathway that goes down here. I'm hoping it connects to another part of the nether fortress and it looks like it does. But oh, let's go. Okay, we do have a blaze spawner, which is perfect. I will be covering it up just so the gas does not blow it up. 15 blaze rods will definitely be enough for us. Now, the only thing I want to do before I leave the nether is look for a blue forest. I don't know the actual name of it, but the reason for that is because endermen spawn there a lot and we will need some ender pearls. Since I've had no luck finding one of those forests so far, I will be heading back and just trying to find Endermen and fight them. I was going to look out for Endermen to fight, but I did happen to remember that clerics can actually trade Ender Pearls. On episode six, I believe there are multiple comments telling me about getting a cleric for Ender Pearls, and luckily I remembered that, so we are going to try and level up our cleric to get some Ender Pearls. I do have quite a lot of emeralds, so we will be trading for redstone to level up our cleric because. I actually do not have a lot of rotten flesh. We also will be getting lapis, I guess. And some glowstone, it looks like. Okay. There we go. Ender pearls. Five emeralds for an ender pearl, which is very nice to see. There are 12 ender pearls right there. While that is recharging, what I'm actually going to do is go and collect a bunch of carrots just to trade for even more emeralds because these villagers have been hard at work. And as you can see, we have quite a lot of carrots in both of our chests. 
Thank you to everyone who said I can get Ender Pearls from the Cleric. And now I will start trading all of the carrots that we have for emeralds. I do believe I have five farmer villagers. So spending all of those emeralds is not a big deal for us at all. And this villager is kind of trapped in an awkward spot. I accidentally freed him from here and he ran over here. So I trapped him here. But he does trade these carrots for our emeralds. And now that we're out of carrots, we can just go back and collect even more carrots. 24 eyes of ender, which I hope is enough. I also do have these six extra ender pearls and we will be getting to this ender dragon fight very soon We now have unbreaking three power to infinity and flame on a bow I think I have everything that I will need for this ender dragon fight Okay, let's go on the hunt for the what's it called? Let's go on the hunt for the end what a cool area we have here. Oh my gosh, this is such a cool area. Making our way into a dark oak forest. Yet again, another really, really cool area. This might be the biggest dark oak forest I've ever seen. And we haven't even seen the full forest. And there's this really cool lake in the center. While we're looking for the end, I want to say thank you all so, so much for five thousand subscribers we are halfway to ten thousand which is just crazy to think about and i am seriously thankful for all of your amazing support oh my gosh this dark oak forest just continues to go on a potion of instant health that is nice okay looks like we passed where the end is at Okay, it looks like we are directly above where the end is at. Okay, here we are. All I need to do now is find where the portal is at and hopefully find the library just to get a ton of books. Here we go. I don't think I've actually ever seen the portal room have a second entrance. Here is the library. Now that I've blocked off every single path except for the path to the portal and to the library, I will get my loot organized in a chest along with setting my spawn. Oh gosh. Okay, now I do have 25 golden carrots along with nine golden apples and a potion of instant health, plus some building blocks and a bucket of water, but I do think I am ready to begin this ender dragon fight. Here we go. The end. Okay, here we go. Hopefully the dragon does not fight me while I'm just trying to bridge over. And I will say this is the first time I'm ever fighting the ender dragon on Java. I fought the ender dragon on bedrock a lot, but never once have I fought the ender dragon on Java. So we shall see how this goes. And gosh darn it, I was supposed to bring a pumpkin. If you did watch the 100 days in bedrock video, um, I made this a lot harder for myself by accidentally looking at the enderman. So I definitely hope that doesn't happen here. I most likely will not be fighting the ender dragon until I knock down all of these little tower thingies that heal him. Did I hit that? I think I did. Oh! Oh my gosh! Oh, I think I hit that. I did not know the ender would go after him like this. This is so cool. Yeah, hey, what the heck? Oh my gosh! Oh! Oh! There's no way! Oh my gosh! What the heck? I've no- Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, my heart is racing right now. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Come on! Come on, where'd he go? Ow! Oh, I'm in his fire! Oh my gosh! Oh! Come on! Come on! No, no, no. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Oh my gosh. I'm going to hit the dragon one time with my sword and I kind of want to take him out with my arrows. Okay. I think he has like just one health left. This is good. This is good. All right. I'm waiting for him to fly up. I want to get him with the bow. I want to get the nice shot. Come on. Ow. What the heck? I didn't even look at you. Ow. What? I didn't even mean to gush darn it. I wanted to get him with the bow. Oh no. I need to get, let me, let me get the screenshot. Oh gosh. Okay. Uh, screenshot. Screenshot. I can't hear anything. Okay. I hope I got some good screenshots. I, 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 ow, ow, stop. Feeded the ender dragon. Yes. Oh yeah. Give me all of this experience. Yes. Oh my gosh. That fight was so intense yet so fun. Let's collect the dragon egg.
There we go, and then we actually are not going to be leaving the end just yet. We are going to go into here, and we will be looking for an end city so we can get ourselves an Elytra. That honestly was probably the funnest Ender Dragon fight I have ever had. I've died multiple times facing the Ender Dragon. Never fought the Ender Dragon in Java. Oh my gosh! Oh. Okay, um, oh my gosh. And here we go. Oh, yeah. I will try to mark my way with these torches just so I can kind of find my way back after I find an end city and get the elytra. Also, while I'm at the end city, I will need to fight some shulkers to get some shulker chests, shulker boxes. No, no. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. I gotta, I gotta take this a lot more seriously. I just, I threw the ender pearl, caught myself. And then luckily I had it. I am so lucky. I had one last ender pearl or that would have been it. I would have lost all of my netherite gear and, uh, yeah, gosh, darn it. Okay. I need to get, I need to get some more ender pearls and hopefully soon we come across an end city. Finally, an end city. Oh my gosh. I have been out here for I do not know how long, but it is very nice to come across an end city. And I see that there is a way to leave, which I did not actually know those spawn at end cities because I've been kind of lighting my way up every couple hundred or so blocks. But we have finally found our end city and I do not see a boat. Oh gosh, please do not tell me I got that unlucky, please. There is no boat, but we will still explore it only because we can get some pretty dang good loot. And then after that, we will go look for another end city, but look for one that does have a boat. Actually, yeah, if you wanna hit me, that'd be nice. Thank you. Okay, and there, six diamonds. Efficiency, oh, this is a nice pickaxe. Curse of binding? Honestly, a good pair of boots, I'll take it. I've now went through this whole end city and it is time for us to go look for another end city so we can get ourselves some elytra. I've been traveling through the end for quite a while and I just came across another one of those portals and this one does not have an end city around it. I don't know if maybe every thousand blocks or every couple thousand blocks like one of these spawns. So I guess I will just continue on traveling because I am not leaving the end until I get an elytra. There's our little spawn portal right over there. And then just right over here, we have an end city and not again. There is no way. If I find two end cities and neither of them have a ship, ah, uh... here is the end city. And yet again, there is no ship which I don't know what the chances of finding two end cities and neither of them having a ship, but this is just so incredibly unlucky. I'm not even going to explore it. I'm just going to carry on looking for another end city. And there goes all of our loot. I had my mic muted because in the background, I like watching YouTube while I'm recording and I don't need my audio. So basically it just went like, no, no. And um, yeah. In our chest, we still have our netherite ax and our netherite shovel. We also have a diamond. Yay. I also have one netherite ingot back at the house, but there goes all all of our netherite gear. I'm going to make my way back to our base. The it's hard to tell how far you can throw with the ender pearl because of how the trajectory is. It, 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 it. That's the second time I took a fall like that where I just under threw with the ender pearl, landed on the wall. And the first time I luckily caught myself, but I just, oh my gosh. And like the reason that happened, I mean, obviously it's because I messed up and I under threw it. But if I would have just found a boat in one of the first two end cities, Oh my gosh. I didn't I, if 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 I would have died there, I would spawn 
all the way back right by where the portal is at. There are so many just awful things about dying there. For one, I lost everything and I can't get it back because it fell in the void. Of course, just at the beginning of this episode, I finished getting my netherite gear and then that happens. So just the lineup of that is just awful. My boots were incredibly good. My helmet was super good. And then my chest plate and leggings both had protection for and mending. I also lost my sword and my pickaxe. Plus the dragon egg, all of those levels, all of that loot, just, just everything just lined up horribly for me. And on top of all of that, I found two end cities and neither of them had a boat. So of course I keep looking and then eventually, you know, I just, uh, if either of those first two end cities had a boat, I would not have died there. Hey, hey, I, I, got, I, I can't take all of the blame for this. I'm trying to stay happy right now, but that just, I guess it's time for us to get a little bit of a restart, I guess. I mean, and by restart, I do not mean anything about our base. I just mean our armor and tools. And we might have to fight the ender dragon again and we still eventually will have to go back to the end again to get an elytra so just everything is just so uh. i have 14 diamonds i do have one extra netherite ingot i still do have a good diamond pickaxe but it's silk touch and not fortune now i did find a really good diamond pickaxe but i do not know if i put that in the ender chest or not i really hope i did but yeah it's time for us to start fresh on our armor and tools in our next episode I will create an ender chest and see exactly what I saved. I hope I saved those diamond boots that we found and that diamond pickaxe that we found. In our last episode, we spent a lot of time in the end and we lost pretty much everything. What you see right here is everything that we have left. So today's episode is going to be focused on getting a full set of diamond armor and a diamond sword along with getting all of that enchanted. While I was at one of the end cities, there was an ender chest that I did put some loot in. So I'm hoping I ended up putting some good loot in the ender chest. There was a pickaxe and a pair of boots that were very nice, but I don't think we put either of those in the ender chest. I could also go mining for netherite in today's episode. I do not think I will do that just because I've been mining for netherite a lot recently. The pickaxe I am using now has efficiency four on breaking three and silk touch. Sadly, we lost our fortune three pickaxe. So before I do go mining for some diamonds, I would like to get some fortune three. And now to see what we have in the ender chest and we have an additional six diamonds, the ender dragon egg, which is super good. Also enough shulker shells for one shulker chest and a pretty nice diamond shovel, but we already do have our netherite shovel. We'll put our dragon egg here for now but eventually i would like to make an actual you know nice little monument nice little build for the dragon egg now i will need four more diamonds for a diamond helmet and then an extra two for a diamond sword i will go mining for two more diamonds and i will mine it with an iron pickaxe and then once i get three diamonds i will then try to get a fortune three so i can finish off getting the helmet and the sword This is directly above our little mine shaft, and I instantly see two diamonds, which is perfect. Now that I have an extra diamond pickaxe, let's go try and get fortune three. I'm now going to reroll enchantments with our diamond pickaxe just to hopefully see a fortune three. There we go, fortune three. So I will now get to level 30, and then we will have a fortune three pickaxe. Now that we're level 30, it is time for us to get ourselves Fortune 3. Fortune 3, Efficiency 4, and Unbreaking 3, beautiful. I also have a Mending Book that Action 4. Before I enchant our boots, I would love to get a Feather Falling 4. Trying to get Feather Falling 4 has to be one of the hardest enchantments to get. I then started to enchant diamond armor that I had with some books that I had. We now have a full set of diamond armor and a full set of tools. So for our armor, we just have Aqua Affinity on our helmet. I would like to get Respiration soon. On our diamond chest plate, we just have Protection 2 and Mending. I am planning on getting a Protection book to make the protection even stronger. On our leggings, we have Unbreaking 2, Fire Protection 4, and Mending. And then our 
boots have everything but feather falling four which is another thing that i'll need to get it's just enchanting for feather falling four is so hard our sword has sharpness five and mending and our newest pickaxe is netherite has unbreaking three efficiency four fortune three and mending our gear is not as good as it once was but we will continue to enchant and get books just to make this even better i wasn't planning on going back to the end in this episode but the more i think of it the more i want the elytra so i will be heading back to the end trying to look for an end city with a ship and get the elytra i did lose my bow in the end but i do have a couple of bows that i can combine to make a pretty nice bow And just like that, we have a brand new bow with Unbreaking 3, Punch 2, Power 3, and Infinity. This entire bow was crafted from other turns somewhere. Now I'm not completely lost. If I really need to, I can just pull up the coordinates and go back to where my base is at. But I'd rather just find the stronghold right now because I've been out here for a while already. Okay, well, I somehow came across a pillager base. Since we're here, we might as well go and conquer it. Okay, we got a goat horn, and that's pretty much it. This is the village that we've been to before that's by our house. Our base is way down that direction. Usually we just come this way for the village, but I think I might have went all the way around just like this and then came all the way back here. This is the village where we transported the two villagers to start breeding the villagers back at base. So if I go this direction, that should lead me right to where the stronghold is. explored some more and was able to come across nothing and right when i finally decided to not go to the end in this episode i came across this we have found our very first lush cave and this is super super lucky for us because with all these blocks we can get from the lush cave i can use that to make our base look even better so i guess i'll just collect a bunch of the blocks from here and i do not believe we will be going to the end in today's episode i just keep getting lost trying to find it so next time when I do go to the end, I will be bringing Ender Eyes just so I can find where it's at much easier. I also do believe I can bone mill this and get even more. So I do not think I have to collect like every little bit. Transforming our underground base is something I've wanted to do for a long time. But since we haven't found like a cave like this, I haven't been able to. I do have bones on me and I just want to test if bone milling this actually works and okay may maybe not right there because of all this clay okay perfect it does work I think all of this should be enough especially since I can just bone mill it if it's not enough and we will be able to make our underground base look so much cooler after getting back to our base I went to a plains biome and bone milled our moss And after making a big field of moss for us to farm, I then went through, dug it all up, collecting it, getting ready to put this in our cave. I went through this whole process maybe three or four times.
and after adding moss to our base this is what we got i added moss i added the berries and i added the glow vines i was thinking i just want moss on the ceiling of like this bottom part but i could possibly add moss going all the way up to the surface of our cave please be sure to let me know what you think regarding that overall though i do really like how this came out i did add some glowstone in some spots because just having the light is super nice and i ran out of the glow berries i've been wanting moss for so long just so I can do something like this and I do think it came out very nice and I hope you all think it came out looking nice too. Again another spot where I could probably carry it down there but I may start putting moss there when we eventually do expand our base into this massive cave and I do have some future plans for this area right here that's why I just left it empty. Also do you think I should put moss in spots like this and then just have the moss kind of come down? I think that could look really cool but I wasn't too sure because we do have these wall retainers up and in today's episode I want to build a wool farm along with getting a full set of netherite armor and taking on the wither. The first thing I want to do is get that wool farm built and this wool farm will get built right in this area right here. This will be one of the few builds that is built on land and not in our cave. So the first thing I need to do is clear out some of this area right here and then get building the little sheep compartments. The technical part of our wool farm is now complete. There is a minecart with a hopper that will be going back and forth collecting the wool from the sheep and every time it goes back and forth it will drop the wool in this chest. I have shears in the dispenser and the dispenser will cut the wool from the sheep and then the sheep will drop the wool. The minecart with hopper will go all the way around, keep going back and forth. It will then collect this grass right here bam just like that and then the grass will end up in this chest i do have chests on both sides and as of now i do not have any sheep but i will go and collect sheep and then i will use this to walk them up and then i will drop the sheep in here and why there is no build right now for this is because i want to do the build for this out of wool so i will actually need to start farming the wool from the sheep in order to actually complete this build now i'm going to go collect 18 sheep dye them some colors and then sit a AFK for a while to get the wool so I can start this build. And after sitting AFK for about five hours, here is about half of the wool that we got and here is about the other half. The idea for the wool farm is from one of you, thank you TikTok. For the colorful circus tent idea, I saw this comment and I loved the idea and it definitely fits with this type of build. So before we go on the hunt for netherite and fight wither skeletons so we can take on the wither, let's build this colorful circus tent. And this is what we got for the wool farm inside of the circus tent. So as we walk in, I have the floor all covered in wool going all the way down. I tried twice to break the grass underneath the glass just to put the colored wool there, but twice I accidentally hit that grass and we lost two sheep. Also, sometime I kind of do want to put like a colored wool like over the top of this just so I know what colored sheep like is in each because right now you can't tell because the second they get their wool, they just get collected and yeah. We still have quite a lot of wool left, so I will be taking probably about two stacks and head to the nether so I can mine for ancient debris. This this time I will use beds instead of using TNT just because when I used beds in the 100 days video it was much more efficient and it was just working out so much better for me. So I will now go collect some agent debris, enough for a full set of armor and then afterwards I will head to the nether to fight some wither skeletons and then the fight will begin.
we now have a full set of netherite armor yet again plus i was able to get three wither skeleton skulls which is super crazy because it only took me i think eight total wither skeletons to get three skulls and i don't even have looting three so i don't know what the luck is to get like almost 50 percent without even having a looting three in my 200 days bedrock video i had a looting three sword and i still had to take out way more wither skeletons to get three and i do think i have everything ready to go i have four gold golden apples and a bunch of golden carrots along with 10 buckets of milk and I have this nice bow. This will be my first time ever fighting the Wither on Java Edition. I've fought the Wither a bunch of times in total on Bedrock Edition, but never once on Java. I hope the fight is difficult where I get close to dying, but obviously, you know, I don't want to die. And overall, I just hope I have a lot of fun in this fight. I think right about here is as good of a spot as any to take on this fight. Right on the other side of that forest is where our base is, so I do think we're far enough so the fight doesn't actually make its way down there and we actually damage our base. Here Here's our little hut where I will be setting our spawn. I built around it in case the bed got broke because then I'd spawn at the real spawn which is way down there. Now hopefully I do not die. I'm going to be playing this pretty safe. Okay, I am definitely ready for this fight. Let's go ahead and place these skulls. We have our inventory organized and ready. When I took the fight on bedrock, I did have more golden apples and an enchanted golden apple. So I hope four golden apples plus the gear I have is enough to do this fight without dying, of course. All right, here we go. Okay, I think I'm supposed to have one more wither skeleton head. Yeah, okay, well, I gotta go get one more head. Wait a minute. Yeah, no, it, it's just supposed to be four. What the heck? Okay, I'm thinking maybe all of the skeleton heads have to be placed straight like that. Let's begin this fight. What? This is Soul Sand, and that's the Wither Skeleton Head. Why? What the heck? I guess we'll just try to make a tall Wither Skeleton. <laughs> okay, let's try to make the tall version. Maybe that's what we need. Oh gosh, okay, that is what we need. Okay. What? There's a Soul Sand. Maybe you can't place it on grass. I don't know. I don't know, but we're, we're getting into this fight. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. Oh my gosh, my volume is way too loud. That's not what I should be worried about right now, but oh my gosh. Okay, that was pointless. I'm already at like half health. What the heck? Here we go, here we go. Let's begin this fight. What? Oh my gosh. Can't reach him with the sword. Oh my gosh. Okay, so far, this is way harder than it would. What the heck? This is hard as heck. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm actually gonna die. Oh my gosh. Okay, I need to get my buckets out, but he's just chasing me. This is way harder. What? When I fought the when I fought the wither on the bedrock video, I had it at normal difficulty, and I have it the difficulty at normal right now. And this is way harder than what it was on bedrock. And he's like already fully healed. And it's not like I can reach him with my sword. Oh my gosh. I don't I can't do this. Look at his health. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't do this. <laughs> oh no. Oh my god. And he's so fast. Look, he doesn't like give up on chasing me at all. He doesn't create any separation. During the fight in Bedrock, I was able to run away and like get some space between us. He does not let me do that. Oh no, I'm trapped in a hole. Oh no. Half a heart! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, I can't even heal right now. I, oh no, oh no. Come on, come on, come on. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the difficulty is on normal. I'm going to put the difficulty to easy. There was a, there was another situation kind of like this where it was a little too difficult for me. And the overall answer was to just put it at wherever I want it. So I'll put the difficulty at easy. Not peaceful. But we'll have it at easy and we'll see if it gets any easier. But first I need to collect all of my loot. I don't want to use my golden apple if I'm just going to die right now. Where is my helmet? I don't see my, oh my gosh. If I can just heal up, do I have my bow? Yes, I do. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to run. I'm trying to run. Let's see if it's any easier on easy. Let, let, let's find out. I think the only difference is on easy. He doesn't give you the wither effect, which is actually huge, but he does heal incredibly fast and he doesn't like give you time to like get separation. Oh my gosh. Half a heart again. <laughs> what is this? Why doesn't he just let me be? Oh my gosh. Okay. Easy is not easy. By the way, easy is not easy. This is hard as heck. Oh my gosh. And I can't hit him with my sword. Helmet, are you here? Helmet. Oh. I don't stand a chance in this fight. Like I don't stand like a chance at all with how fast he heals and I'm not able to do enough damage to him. And it's on easy difficulty, which is the crazy thing. Yeah, he just, he's healing like. 
Okay, that actually was working for a little bit. Let me out, let me out. No, I'm trapped in here. I don't have any building blocks. Oh, I do. The only way I'm going to be able to beat him is... Oh my gosh, is if I have full hell, I take a golden apple, and I just do what I just did right there and just go rapid fire. I think that's my only hope, okay? Here we go. Going for the rapid fire technique. He's moving too much. Well, there goes that technique, and I'm trapped in a hole. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, run, run, run. Oh my gosh. Run, 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 run. <laughs> Look at him, he's healing. He heals too fast. He dodges my arrows too well. He doesn't give me any separation. This is... Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm putting the difficulty to peaceful. Now I don't... Oh my gosh. I swear I did not know that that was going to happen. What I thought was going to happen right there was I put it to peaceful and he just becomes weak, not like gets eliminated. Not again. <laughs> I lost everything again. I think he blew it up after... Oh my gosh. Because th this is where my loot was. There's no way some of my other loot got somewhere else. I have my sword. <laughs> the Wither fights by rapid firing at you. So I think after he killed me, there were still a couple more like little skulls flying at my loot and he just blew up my loot because it's every it's just everything's gone. I have a sword and buckets. First off, I want to say I thought switching the difficulty to peaceful would just make it slightly easier, not completely destroy the wither i mean it does make sense why it destroyed the wither but then again i'm pretty sure you used to be able to switch the difficulty to peaceful at least i think you could do that against the dragon and it just makes the dragon weak so i was thinking i can do that here against another minecraft boss wither rose that's what what the heck is this <laughs> What? That's actually pretty cool. That's actually really cool. That that's that's what I get. In exchange for all of my netherite armor and all, just everything I had, I get a wither rose. So for the second time in this series, we have lost everything. Sorry for changing the difficulties. Just when I had this difficulty issue a while back, the main response was to just put it to wherever I want to put it at. And even when the difficulty was on easy, that was still way too hard for me. And I was hoping peaceful would just make it a little easier for me. But so in this world, we have been unable to get the elytra and unable to conquer a bastion and unable to defeat the wither i think next episode i'm just going to have to restart on getting loot yet again but i will show less of that process since we've already went through that process two times in this series sorry i wasn't able to defeat the wither sorry i wasn't even able to just keep the wither going my most recent fight against the wither i was able to get away from the wither so i could heal better or just take shots from a distance but this wither does not just leave you at all that is going to be it for today's episode and i hope by switching the difficulty i didn't ruin the video for some of you but it definitely is obvious that that fight was just way too hard for me even on easy difficulty which is just crazy to even think about i do want to thank you all so so much for all of your support i try to say thank you as often as i can without ruining the meaning of thank you just because like i might say it so much but i seriously am thankful for all of your amazing support in today's episode i want to transform a village since it is getting close to christmas and we do have a big snow biome down there and a village down there i want to take the snow and kind of just redesign the entire village first off i am wearing iron iron armor and not diamond armor or netherite armor and that is because we have now lost all of our loot twice now in this series so for now i will not be getting myself any new diamond armor or netherite armor and i will just be using this iron armor after we've died fully geared twice now i do not think it's useful for us to be geared up anymore i've now went through the process of getting new sets of armor and getting it all enchanted twice now and both times we've lost that entire set so i hope you like this iron armor armor i am going to be bringing a fair amount of wood and stones and the reason for that is because i don't want to keep traveling back and forth to get materials from my base for this build because it does take quite a little bit of time since we do not have the elytra I have now made it to where the snow biome is at and the village that we will be transforming. So my plan is to tear down each building while kind of keeping the location of where each building is at and then replace that building with newer houses made out of dark oak and spruce. Also, I might want to terraform the land just a little bit because some of the spots are a bit wonky. I also want to add snowmen all around here and kind of get this entire area covered in snow for the December winter Christmas theme because the amount of wood that i have right now will not be enough i will also be planting some trees around the area now before i do anything i do want to start tearing these houses down and as i break them i do believe i will be keeping the door unbroken just so i can know the location of where each house is i won't be building the houses this same way but it would be nice to have the houses spread out pretty nicely throughout this village
Now that every single house in this village has been torn down, I will go and get some snow. And I'm glad we found pumpkins because I want to cover this entire area with snow and making some snowmen will do just that. I do hope having 10 snowmen walking all around the village does cover the entire area with snow. There are the 10 snowmen. If this doesn't seem to be enough, I could go get more pumpkins and place more snowmen just to get, you know, this whole area good. I will be building each house where each of these doors are. I do have three different house designs that I want to use throughout this village. Okay, 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 I have now finished building the first three houses and these will be the three house designs that I will use for this village. So here is our first one. They will all be following the same block pattern in spruce and cobble. I think with snow, just spruce and cobble just fits the best. Now I do need to get glass because I want to have windows there and I still need to put windows here and I didn't do anything on the interior. But as for the exterior, besides getting some windows in, this is our first build. Here is our second house design. This one actually actually doesn't have any windows at all. I was thinking of maybe breaking this right here and putting in some windows there. It's small, compact, but I definitely do think it will fit with the snow. And here is our final house design. Yet again, very small, but I still do think it fits with the snow very well just because the spruce cobble. So I am now going to be building one of these houses at each of these spots where the doors are at. And then afterwards, I'll have to work on the interior and put in the windows. Also, when I go back to our base to get some glass for windows, I do think I'll get some more pumpkins because because these 10 snowmen are not doing the job. Our transformation into a snowy village is now complete. Now, something that did happen was when I went back to my base to get some glass, I did end up getting a bunch more pumpkins and I made 24 additional snow golems. Sadly, after that, it rained and I lost all of the 34 total snow golems. So I created five additional snowmen to carry them around with leads to cover this land in snow. Now, sadly, snowmen can't cover path grass in snow and they also can't cover the parts that have have leaves so I had to go through the spots where there were paths and kind of break it and replace it with dirt and then place the snow on top of it there still are some spots that do not have snow although I did get most of the village covered in snow and I planted a couple of trees I did want to plant some of these bigger trees along the way but for some reason whenever I would bone mill them they just wouldn't grow I do hope that you enjoyed this build I think it did come out pretty nice although now that I'm done I much rather would have just built these buildings like on top of an actual snow biome because trying to create your own snow biome is not easy that's gonna be it for this video i hope you all did enjoy if you did please consider leaving a like and subscribing if you have not done so already i hope to see you all in my next video